Okay, I'm here. I'm just checking. I have a new system. I press a button over here to start streaming rather than press a button over there. And apparently, I think it worked because I'm here with you live on the coding train. Hello, I'm speaking a little quietly. It's finals week here at NYU. There's a class going on in this room over here. So, um, you know, I think they could. Maybe they'll get out of class in a little bit, or I might just sort of forget about it and start to ramp up the energy and the volume. But, hello, today is May 4th. And uh, in fact, I'm just going to get started with the fact that it is uh, May 4th, and I'm just going to, I'm looking around, good morning, um, and let's begin with the coding challenge. Oh, first. <laughs> Hello to the computer science class at uh, uh, A.Y. Jackson SS in on Ottawa, Ontario. Hello, maybe you're actually watching this. I hear you're having a computer science class and um, maybe you'll do this coding challenge with me. So I'm gonna open up processing. How's this for just getting started right here? Could it be the coffee? I was, I was trying to um, get started at 10.30 this morning, but I had a visitor, and it was lovely to have a visitor, and I got caught in conversation. I was talking, I was talking, and I was like, oh, it's 10.25, <laughs> I have to go upstairs. So I didn't even get a chance to eat my melon. So I'm really gonna one-up Jabril's here. Jabril's, if you're watching, this is for you. You know, most people say they don't like melon. It's not anybody's favorite fruit. And I'll admit, when I get a fruit salad, Really, you know, I'm like picking around the melon to go for the blueberries or the mango. But I have to say, a really good honeydew melon. Break up your throat. Mm. Got a low pH, which is good for me. I've got acid-related anxiety. <laughs> uh oh, there's lost a piece of fruit there. Okay, Ooh, the sound is low. Um, Oh, whoa, wait a second. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this. It's the mystery invisible. <laughs> just to like, like, just so you guys all know that I'm not completely insane. This is this, a piece of honeydew melon on a fork. <laughs> but over here, this is a new mystery cloaking device melon that's totally invisible. Mm. <laughs> Okay, mm-hmm. So today is the return, return of the 10-minute coding challenge. Can I? I really shouldn't do this. Every once in a while, people are like, how come you never use the timer anymore? Oh, no, I don't want it full screen. Ah! I just want a little, okay, I, I, I want to be able to pop this out. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> 10 minute timer, there's a way I used to do the 10 minute timer. How did I do it with OBS, with uh, Wirecast? I could do, <laughs> here's, here's where I think things are gonna go wrong today on the coding train. I was like, I'm gonna start immediately with a coding challenge. And I thought, let me try to put a 10 minute timer. <laughs> and then 45 minutes later, I'm trying to debug the timer. You could turn up the overall volume level a little bit. Let's see if I can manage that. Oh, it's quite low actually on the uh, microphone. There we go. How's that? I just turned up my volume a little bit, so hopefully that's better for everybody now. Um, there's a browser source in OBS. There's also a plugin for timers. All right, I'm giving myself 10 minutes to try to make a 10 minute timer. <laughs> this is like, okay, ready? So this, now we're gonna have the timer. If only I knew how to program my own timer. <laughs> if only I could do that. Okay, this timer now represents my 10 minutes to get an open broadcast studio timer going. Uh, okay, so if I go here, and let me open, let me try just using a different browser than the other browser I have open, just to 10 minute timer. And then if I do um, this, and then if I add a source, 
display source, image source, scene, video capture, color source, browser source. Uh, create a new browser source. Ooh. Oh, look at this. Oh, and then I put the, oh, look at this. And then I put the URL for this. Uh, this is crazy. How do I get the URL for this? Leave page, yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Here we go. I better give myself 15 minutes for this uh, coding challenge. A 10 minute timer. I really, uh, okay. Here we go. Copy. Now if I put this here, paste. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, can I not? Can I interact with it? I can't interact with it. So this is kind of wacky. This is so weird. Oh, I could crop it. Um. Oh, but I can't interact. Can I refresh it? <laughs> uh. How come I can't interact with it? Interact mode for, oh, there's an interact mode. I want the interact mode. Okay, hold on. Properties, local file, shut down, refresh, cache. Reload this page, yeah. Okay, but how do I, how do I interact? I don't see an interact mode. Okay. Um, enable preview, lock preview, preview scaling, full screen, copy, filters, interact. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, and I have, now I can interact with it. This is great. I love learning Open Broadcast Studio live while I'm live streaming. Hello, good morning. Eh, eh. Maybe we'll get to TensorFlow.js today. It's quite possible. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to, no, no, I want to crop it. How do I crop in, um, I forget how I crop in OBS. This is changing the size. I've done this before. Or, oh, but what if I just do this with interact? Whoa! How do I crop? Holding alt. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys don't realize this is like a game of Twister. <laughs> so the computer for Open Broadcast Studio's monitor over, over here. The mouse is right here. And the keyboard is over here. So what's the equivalent of Alt on a Mac? Control, Option. There we go. Twister here, there we go. All right. We're back. And how do I, can't start it now. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I have to unfull screen it, I have to. I have to refresh it. Refresh cache of current page. Okay, we've got to start over here. This is going to be fine now though, because stop. Oh, and now I have to do option again. Option. And now, there we go. Option. Option, option, hold on, reset, 10 minutes. Can I key out? No, who cares, it's fine. Okay, we did it everybody. We did it. And I still have, I still have five minutes to go on this timer, okay. <laughs> okay, now ooh, let's make it 15 minutes. <laughs> let's make it a 15 minute timer. When was there ever a coding challenge completed? Oh, the keyboard doesn't work in interacting with it. Oh my goodness, are you serious? This is crazy. Uh, keyboard doesn't inter work with interacting. Oh. oh boy, oh boy. 
Okay, hold on, hold on. We can make this 15 minutes. Edit, edit, interact. No, 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 not interact. Okay, hold on. Interact. <laughs> uh, browser source. Where do I change the URL? Properties. 10 minutes. Just change it to 15. Refresh cache of current page. And no. How about refresh the whole page? There we go. All right. Oh, and interact. All right. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Just use the OBS timer plugin. Oh, that would, but I, I wanted to learn about how to have uh, a browser thing in o Open Broadcast Studio. So that's, I'm glad that I learned that now. All right. <clears throat> so. Okay, I can't see the um, I can't see the YouTube chat too easily. Oh, I don't have any like good space sound effects. I meant to get some space sound effects. We won't have that for today. Next time. Whew. In fact, I even have this great Darth Vader mask that like changes your voice into Darth Vader, but it, I wasn't able to bring it because I could have done the whole coding challenge wearing that, which I'm sure would have been very entertaining for everybody. Another time. Oh, one of these days I'm going to have a lot more time to buy costumes and do more stuff. Woo! It's getting warm in here. Let's get started. Hello! Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, I'm recording. Hello! Happy May 4th! I'm going to do a coding challenge for May 4th on the coding spaceship. Eh. Mm. Um, this coding challenge, I'm going to make some scrolling text that looks as if it is scrolling off into the distance. And I, it is the return of the 15 minute timer, which, you know, when has that ever gone wrong? I mean, it's always been so great to have the timer. Nothing ever goes wrong with the timer. So um, why am I doing this challenge today? It's, I don't know, it's uh, the 4th of May and I thought it might be appropriate and maybe someday I'll get a sponsorship and then I'll be able to, um, you know, have all these logos and music happening at the same time. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> here we go. Let's start the timer and let's begin. All right, so I'm, I'm going to do this in processing. Processing is a Java-based programming environment. If you were anybody else or if you were born after 1990, you would probably do some kind of like CSS transforms and have some crazy cool 3D text scrolling thing in the browser. But I am, I am old and I like to draw my pixels one at a time. <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, let's make a window that is, uh, let's just start with like 800 by 600 and let's, Let's just admit the fact that we're going to be doing this in 3D and I'm going to add the P3D renderer. Then in draw, I'm going to say background zero. Oh, and I need some text. Hmm. So let's make a text file. Well, first let me save this and I'm going to call this, I'm going to just save this to the desktop under May 4th challenge. And um, I'm just checking the chat because I'm going to need help. I'm definitely going to need help. I'm at 14 minutes. Okay, here we go. Uh, and don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Okay, text edit. On the E key still doesn't work on this computer. So many things going wrong. Format plain text. So let's get some text. I am using in this coding challenge uh, processing.org. And so, uh, I don't know. This looks like some good text. Oh, yeah, this is great. Let's look at this. Let's use this. Um, Okay, so I'm going to save this as, uh, and I'm going to go to the desktop, and I'm going to go to May 4th challenge, and I'm going to go to uh, space.txt. No E, come on, fingers. Okay, 
There we go. So now, in back in my sketch here, I want to access that text. So I'm going to create, um, actually, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it uh, txt. I don't want to call it text because there's a function called text in processing. And just to, so I don't confuse myself. And one I'm going to use the load strings function. And I'm going to load, uh, what did I call that file? Space. Uh, space.txt, but the thing is, you might um, won't be wondering here, I really don't have time to explain this, but I'm going to anyway. Why do I have this array of strings called lines? Well, it so happens that the load strings function loads a text file and takes every line from that text file and makes it a separate element in an array. And this is actually very convenient in most cases, but not so much right now. So I am then going to instead say, uh, actually, this might actually be really useful because I might, I might want to make use of that array. But right now, I'm just going to say txt equals join, uh, lines, lines dot join, and then I will join them with the line break character. And join, I'm going to join them with the line break character. Lines dot join, hmm, maybe I need to give it uh, double quotes because it's not a character, it's a string. Nope. Oh, let's check our errors. Cannot invoke join string on the type ar string array. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> Let's do this. This is a processing function that exists called uh, uh, lines. That's called join. That's written into processing. There's no join function for um, an array in Java, I guess. And the join function is part of the processing API where I can take an array and join them with a line break. Okay, now we are going to say, uh, fill 255 because I want my text to be white on a black background. Then I'm going to say text uh, txt and I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a bounding box of the full window. And let's just run this and see what we got. Okay, there we go. There's our text. It is in this window. There it is. All right, let's do some stuff. I really should think about the font. Oh, I didn't even think about this. Do I have time to go look for the appropriate font for this particular simulation that, I, uh, that I'm attempting to code without buzz marketing for free a particular commercial product. This is, this is really pointless what I'm attempting to do here. Uh, oh, it's a single, anyway. Um, text font, oh, text size. Let's just try text size 64. Okay, I also want to use, oh, that's pretty good. Um, I also want to use text align and I want to full justify. That's not gonna work. <laughs> Let's try center, just out of curiosity. What does that do? Uh, it centers it, okay, centers it within that box. Well, let's use that for right now. Okay, we're doing well. Look at this, I got 10 minutes. I have time to eat some melon. <laughs> this is gonna be really weird. I'm so confident about this coding challenge. <laughs> eat this piece of melon, which you're wondering, what is the deal with this piece of melon? It's purple, it's blue. This is the magical space melon that they eat on the planet Mafuin. <laughs> That's the only planet I know. <clears throat> That's delicious. Very good, very low pH, soothing of the throat. Mm. Okay, sponsored by Alien Melon. Okay, now, uh, what I wanna do is I need a variable. I'm gonna say, uh, I was about to say let, but I'm in processing, I need to specify the type. Float y equals zero. Let's use, let's set the text at zero comma y, and let's say y minus minus. So y is just going to change by one every frame. And now, we have scrolling text. Where did it go? Oh, look at this. I gave it a bounding box, which was the height. Oh, this was going to be a no edit. This is going to be a no edit coding challenge. Can't edit that out. The camera went off. It's fine. I fixed it. Um, so I need to, um, can I possibly make this bounding box without, I mean, I could just do this. And here's the thing. I want it to start. Right, I want it to, Y to start at uh, height. Ah, okay, I'm getting some, so now here we go. 
Processing is a flexible software sketchbook and a language for learning how to code. All right, this is great. I'm really wasting time here. Uh, all right, I'm told there is a specific color um, that I'm supposed to use. So let's change that. R75213238. All right. Processing is a flexible software sketchbook. I, there must be a specific font. It also needs to be full justified. I'm going to see if I can manage that. Um, but here's the thing. It's, so this is just scrolling up, but I, I have made this, do not forget, a P3D sketch, which means what I can do right now is I want to rotate the scene this way. Now, if this is if this train whistle is representing my axis of rotation, this is the z-axis. That would be something spinning around. So if I were to just say, for example, whoops, let me zoom back out here, and say something like, oh, let me rotate by, you know, 45 degrees, which is radians of 45, or I'm going to say pi, pi divided by 8. No, pi divided by 2 is 90, so pi divided by 4 is 45 degrees. We should see the text completely gone. Why? Ah, I need to like, I need to rotate around the center. I need to rotate around the center of this. Oh, look at that. There it goes. Here it comes. It's kind of like this. That should be the sound effect that goes along with this. All right. So I, what I want to do is rotate by X, but let's, I think actually what's going to make more sense is for the world of this universe that I'm building to um, be, have its origin point in the center. So really what I want is for, uh, I'm going to take out the rotate. Really what I want is to trans, like the, the top left is the default origin point, zero, zero. So now I want that origin point to be in the middle. And you're going to see, uh, now, why am I not seeing anything? I will eventually. <laughs> it's very slow, the scrolling text. I only have six minutes left. I got way too overconfident about this. But so now what I want is for the text actually to not be at zero comma y, but to be at negative width divided by two. So offset it. And then y can start at height divided by two. And now we should see back to what I had before. And now hopefully I can now rotate, right? This was, this will now rotate my text along the z-axis, so it's doing that. But what I really want to do is I want to rotate it along the x-axis. I want it to like sort of fold down. So I want to say rotate x and processing is a flexible software. Is it too slow or is that actually the appropriate speed? I also can't <laughs> see it at all. So let's make it much wider. Oh, wrong color, I'm told. Uh, 238, 213, 75. I did it backwards. Okay. <laughs> uh, processing is a flexible software sketchbook and a language for learning how to code within the context of the Visual arts, I don't know, it's going kind of slow. Let's, uh, let's have this go a little bit faster. What else does this need? This is done. Done, four minutes to go. Yeah, there we go. What else should I do? That is approximately the right speed, yeah. So the one thing is I'm pretty sure that if I were being true to this particular design, it really should be full justified. I'm trying to think of how to do that. Uh, make it like 80% of the width, yeah. Um, so I guess what I should do also, the bounding box, um, I guess I can adjust the bounding box. Um, yeah, no, but that's not doing me any good because um, why doesn't that... Oh no, okay, so negative width. So, hold on. So I need to, let me just make this. 
So this should be negative w divided. So I, I want the bounding box and the text to be centered based on the bounding box. So I've got to, and I want that bounding box not to be the full width. So I'm shrinking it by like 80%. And I probably should have the font, the text size, be related to the width as well. So it was like 1200 divided by 64. Well, if it was 60 point, that would be 100, 200. So I could say width divided by 200, right? Oh no, I meant to say, <laughs> not 220. <laughs> so let's do this. And so that's right. I guess the size is too big actually. So let's make the text size width divided width times uh, 0.15. And now, whoa, I meant 015. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> ah, no, no, no. <laughs> Let's just make up numbers. So no point four is going to be really big. <laughs> oh, five. 5%? Oh, yeah, 5%. 5% is good. Let's make it a little smaller. Let's make it like uh, 3%. <laughs> this is really the way, this is the way to program. Just try different numbers. Oh, the width is still too wide. Ah, this is the problem. I liked my size. I wanted to enter. There we go. Thank you. That only took me, oh, I have a minute and 42 seconds left. Processing is a flexible software sketchbook and a language for learning how to code within the context of the visual arts. Okay, what else do I need to do in my minute and a half that I have left? Text mode is model or shape. Yeah, yeah so there is a text mode thing. Oh, the full justify. No, I now have a challenge to you. <laughs> Try to, oh, and I, the reason why I was doing this is because I wanted to demonstrate processing's wonderful full screen function. And, Whoa. That's weird. Why did that happen when I went full screen? Huh. Do I just need to rotate much more? What did I, what did I do to deserve this? That's so weird. What if I do this? How am I doing on time? Yeah, that's so weird. Why when I went full, oh, P3D, thank you. Ah, no wonder, ah, I'm a, ah, 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 ah. So of course, size is where you specify the width and height manually and a uh, particular renderer. If I say full screen, I still need to specify the renderer. So it was working, but it just defaulted to a 2D renderer and rotate X didn't work. Oh, the timer went off. I finished. Here we go. We're done. Oh. <laughs> mm. I finished. Mm. I can't do the Jabril's thing. I can't talk while I'm eating. How does he do it? Somebody's got to tell me. We don't know what I'm talking about. Check out Jabril's YouTube channel. I have now made a sideways scrolling yellow text thing with no theme music or branding whatsoever with some processing uh, text in the amount of time that I was given. Um, it really should have, uh, it really should be full justified. I will leave that to you. I hope you make a version of this. Please make some, a timer. Do you hear the timer? Or you just hear it, because I really want to hit OK. OK. Um, make your own version of this. Um, add stuff to it to make it more fun or different or with your own style. Um, I'll try to make a JavaScript version of this with P5 and the WebGL renderer of P5. It can make a 3JS one. And then, of course, all of you who know more than I do, Pro many of you could probably make a, a CSS one uh, with transforms and all that fancy new stuff. I know Sarah Drasner, who is like my CSS guru, <laughs> probably knows a way to do this. Um, okay, put a star field behind it. Yes, you can do that. Goodbye. I'm gonna finish this. I'm just like I'm just gonna be done with this coding challenge. Goodbye. 
Okay, there. That was the coding challenge for this morning. Start TensorFlow. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, people want me to start TensorFlow. Okay, it's very warm in here. I should probably tweet that I'm gonna start the TensorFlow stuff now. So let me close this out. Let's come up, oh no. And uh, save this. Oh wait, I have to do something. I have to remember, uh, I have to hit stop. I just have to do a little housekeeping here to upload this because I'm gonna uh, release that today as a standalone coding challenge. Um, so I need to upload this to Google Drive. Oh no. <laughs> um, so I've been using this old Google Drive software on this computer and every time I come up here it tells me this software you're using we're not gonna we're not supporting it anymore. You should really like update to blah 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 new Google Drive thing. <laughs> I just never bothered to do it. It looks like it actually finally uh, but it's no problem because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to you're just gonna have to bear with me here. <laughs> I'm gonna do this manually. I have to log in through the browser, add account. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm actually logged in. Um, right, I wanna be in, oh no, I wanna go to this one. So sorry, I need to upload the video file for that. <laughs> It'll just take me a second. Um, and I have to, oh my God, I have to put in my net ID. Um, and then I have to, oh, wrong password. Are you seriously? And then I need to send myself a push for two-factor authentication. <laughs> this is really, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna say approve. Yep. Okay, now I'm in Google Drive. I'm gonna go to the coding rainbow folder. That's what it's called, that, that's right, I said it. I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna call it May 4. And I'm gonna create that folder. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Someday I will share my Open Broadcast Studio machine screen. Then I need to go to the browser. I need to go to the desktop. I need to grab this file, which is 1.25 gigabytes, and upload it. And it is uploading less than a minute left. Hopefully this isn't messing with the streaming. And then I'm gonna come back here and hit start recording again. Then uh, we can get rid of the, um, I can close this browser source thing, um, unless I need a timer again. And um, I can close this and I can come back to the chat. And there we are. Okay, so I don't know, so um, it's 11.15. I have about two hours, which is pretty good actually. Um, I uh, am going to try to recall, does it bother you if I have this up higher? It's just that, oh, you can see the keyboard of the other, it's so low for some reason. Maybe what I usually do actually is laptop, unhook, no, green screen, unhook, move this down a little bit, so I'm a little bit lower, but now I can move this up. A little bit. Yeah, that's better. Okay, uh, and then lock. All right, sorry for all this configuring stuff. <laughs> uh, no audio? No, the audio must be working. Uh, you line up the timer with the end and the rest just plays. I don't know what's talk, what, what you got, well, I don't know what everybody's talking about in the chat. Okay. Um, so I now, I'm gonna open up a terminal. I'm gonna to go to uh, the desktop and I'm gonna to go to P5 TensorFlow and I'm gonna open up Atom text editor. So I've got this, this is where I last left off and I'm going to run a server. I I'm going to uh, type in my oh, password. Oh. Um, then I'm going to open up the browser, localhost it, 
and uh, hit refresh. This is where I last left off. Make this a little wider. Um, oh, I have plenty more room here. Let me move this over. Um, okay, and then we need to get to the API reference and uh, okay, so here, let me make a list of the things that I want to talk about. Reshape, oh. Where are the, oh, is it in here, TF tensor? Flatten as scalar as 1D, as 3D, as 4D, as tight buffer, data, dispose to int, reshape, reshape, expand, squeeze, clone. Where are the math operations for tensors? Um, concat, gather, models, mo layers. Uh, so I'm just looking here. Oh, operations. This is what I'm looking It's down here. Okay. Um, so what I need to, let me make a list here. This camera is off. I think that I don't need um, any of this anymore. So I need to get myself organized. Where do I have some paper towels here to erase this whiteboard? Uh-oh. I might have a slight problem. I'm missing a key supply. Why, where would it have gone? I wouldn't have used it all up. Somebody. Oh, we have another mystery. I would play the serial podcast theme music again, but I got a copyright violation for that last time. So I can't do that again. Uh, huh. Well, I have this remnant of a paper towel. <laughs> Maybe I'll use that. How far will this get me? Eh, pretty far. So I want to make a list of the other TensorFlow.js uh, um, kind of uh, just general topics that I want to discuss. For example, I want to talk about memory management. I want to talk about, I definitely need a bigger paper towel than this piece. These were some tissues. Uh, oh, there they are. There are the paper towels. Found them. Okay. Um, not very much left on this paper towel roll. Save the earth, everybody. I probably should get a reusable. I mean, I try to use the eraser whenever I can, but when I'm, this tends to work better, just a little water and a paper towel. But at least I'm being, I'm only using one little tiny slice here. So I want to make a list. I'm, I don't think that I'm going to make a co completely comprehensive set of tutorials of every single piece of what's inside tensorflow.js, but um, um, the, things, the things that I've done so far, if I make this list, let me do it over here. So, so far, what have I done so far? I did kind of like an intro, check. I also made a video where I talked about uh, tensors. Check. So the other things that I need to do are, I think this could be in one, variables and memory management. Uh, then I want to talk about operations. And then I want to look at, so um, if we look at the operations in the API, like what might be a small list? Um, down here, like add, subtract, multiply, square difference, math. So I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I need to go over all of these. Oh, but matrix multiplication, definitely. 
Then there's some of these convolutions. So, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> so I'm going to go over the basics to lay a foundation. And as I go and make other examples, we might return to some of these. But so um, I do, I want to talk about operations. And then I want to talk about the layers API. And then I want to do X or color predictor and the doodle classifier. This is my, um, and then after that, I'm going to move on to ML5. So this is kind of, I mean, and in, in theory, I had hoped to get all the way through X or today. I don't know if that's particularly realistic, but this is what I'm going, this is my plan for what I'm going to cover, you know, between now and the beginning of June. Say. I think I can get through all of this between now and the beginning of June. And then in June, I'm going to focus on this new machine learning library that's built on top of all this stuff called ML5. So that's my plan. Let me just take a moment to look at the chat, the Slack channel for patrons, um, and see if there's any questions or comments or anything that I'm kind of missing that's key here. Um, <laughs> of course, you know, I can't win. <laughs> I can have all this whole discussion. I come back and look at the chat. And the, what's being discussed is whether I should use Visual Studio Code or Atom. Haven't you all learned anything? The code editor is not the point. It's the ideas, the way of being together as human beings in the world. Yes, I, you might like Visual Studio Code. Yes, I might like Atom. Yes, I probably would like Visual Studio Code more if I just used it. You know, I could, I could put some firmware on this camera so that it would stop shutting off after every 20 minutes, but why? Let's just enjoy ourselves. All right, I'm gonna check the chat again. Um, so I got, I got some, some thumbs up from Kay Weekman. Thank you very much. I mean, it, uh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, but, but Vim, I know, good point. You, know, you would think me being, you know, kind of of a, of a earlier generation of programmer <laughs> um, that I might be using something like Vim. The, the problem is I didn't actually start learning to program until I was 20. At, this is not entirely true because I always have to qualify this, but I, I like to say that I didn't start programming until I was 28, which is true um, because I never did it other than uh, like a little thing in basic on an Apple II Plus when I was in like maybe fourth grade. Um, I think I took one class in middle school where we actually did some assembly language and I took one course about programming in C++ as like an evening course after I graduated from college. But none, none of those really ever took with me. So, um, so I didn't actually grow up with uh, Vim, for example. Um, all right. Why don't you use NPM server? That's also a very good question. There's no reason. There's absolutely no reason. Because my fingers remember how to type Python dash M. And I, I, I think actually with, with the kinds of tools that I use, using like a, a live reload server, so many things could make more sense. All right. Okay. So let's, let me look at variables for a second. So I don't actually know this. I made this list and it's like, I don't really know any of this. I'm trying to learn it as I make these videos, which I should probably say when I start the next one. Variable, so variable, oh, you can make a variable out of a tensor. Oh, so that you can like train it, I see. So the thing is, this is not, I'm gonna go and use the layers API, so I'm less likely to end up being, uh, but I think it's good to mention this stuff. So, oh, TF zeros, I like that. Um, I'm getting notifications on my, uh, yes, tidy, yes, 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 tidy, dispose, these are good points. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, people are guessing that I'm 50? Eh. <laughs> Usually people guess that I'm younger than I am. Let's not talk about my age. That's not the point of this, these videos. Um, all right, so uh, let us begin. I think I'm going to turn the notifications off on my watch. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't actually help.
Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, this needs a little work. Better? Better. Okay. No. Hold on. I need a little more tape here. Bear with me. Fix the problem? I think I did. Okay, great. All right, this is my third TensorFlow.js video, and I actually just a moment ago I made this list. So, what have I done so far? I have made an introduction to where TensorFlow.js sort of fits into the kinds of stuff that I'm working on and thinking about. Um, I made an intro video to the idea of what a tensor is and how to make a tensor, a variable that stores a tensor in your JavaScript code. And now, you know, really what I want to do is I want to get down to, my goal is to get to the point where I'm remaking earlier machine learning coding challenges I did, but instead, but using TensorFlow.js as the basis for them, the foundation for them. So the things that I think that I need to mention and talk about before I get to that is I need to talk about variables and memory management. Um, there's something different between a variable and a tensor, even though there's, they're kind of a similar thing, but it has to do with memory management. I want to talk about operations, so mathematical operations that you can do on these tensors. Um, the layers API, that's a really, that's like the topic I'm the most excited about on this list. And so once I can do three more little quick general TensorFlow.js videos, which are by no means comprehensive as to everything that's in TensorFlow.js, a much larger API than what I'm going to cover. And also, I don't actually know any of this stuff. I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go. So I'm trying to talk you through me learning it. So just in case you're thinking you're watching a video by an expert, <laughs> you're not. Um, and, then, uh, and then I'm gonna get to these coding challenges. And then, I've, I've teased this before, but there's a, a new library called ML5, which is built on top of TensorFlow.js, which I'm going to eventually do a lot of tutorials and videos and hopefully bring some guests in also to do stuff with ML5, okay? So, back to the computer. You could like edit this and I could just reappear over there. <laughs> There's no point in doing that. All right, so I'm back. So the, where I left this off, I think if we look at this code that I had, is I created a tensor. I used tensor 3D because I knew the shape was going to be of rank three, having three dimensions, yes. <laughs> um, and this is the shape. I'm putting integers in it. I'm console logging it. And, incident, and we can see the results here. Now, incidentally, I think I should also note that if I actually want to look at the data, not just seeing it, the string of it like printed out there, then what I want to use is actually the data function. Oh, wow, I probably shouldn't have called mine data. So let's call it a tensor. Probably shouldn't call it that either. Let's call it tense. I'm very tense. Data. Now, this is going to be a problem, I think. Let's see what happens here. And this is, this is going to relate. I know, I'm going to get to the point here. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. Look at this. A promise. Oh, that's so nice of TensorFlow.js to promise me something. <laughs> what are you promising? So here's the thing. There's something weird going on here. And this is actually really the topic of this with variables and memory management in that there's something is happening here. Something is happening right here. These values are stored in a plain old array that's in the computer's memory. And when we make this tensor out of them, that data gets copied onto the computer's graphics processing unit, the GPU. That takes some time, and we want to minimize the amount of times we have to copy memory back and forth. So this is a thing we're going to have to think about as we build more examples in code. And in fact, this <laughs> this here is doing this asynchronously. This this here is doing this asynchronously. Now I wonder if I could give it a callback. Um, I'm just going to experiment here. 
I think they're only using this thing called promises, which I, have I made a video tutorial about this yet? I really need to. Uh, so what happens if I give it a callback to see like, oh, can I, can I give it a callback there? Oh, wait. So let's, let's do this and see like, oh, let's give it a callback and then see if we can look at the stuff that comes out of the callback. Let's see what happens there. No, because I have too many parentheses. Yes, too many parentheses. No, nothing happens there. So it's not using, uh, and, and, and Alka's telling me I could use await, but I, oh, there's, there's so much ES6 and beyond JavaScript going on here. So actually what I want to do is uh, if I say tense.data, I can say then, and then is this special function that's part of a promise where it's saying like once the promise has been resolved, you've made a promise to me, you're gonna keep that promise. And when that promise comes to roost, cock doodle doo I don't know, then um, I can, can I just write code in there? No, I have to make a function. Uh, I can say console.log stuff. Is that how it works? Yes, oh, look at that. So there we go. We can see this is one way, but I actually don't want to deal with any of this. So because um, I'm, I want to just, so this is something that's going to come up. I was trying to avoid this. And there's also a keyword called await that I could potentially use. But luckily, um, there is also a function called data sync. So if I use the function data sync, you can see this here. What this will do is actually give me all the data back, but without um, uh, um, without the but 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 block but wait wait for it to be done. So now we should be able to say, boy, I really am very tense. We should see here it is, and then here's it. Now notice it all came back as a one-dimensional array. Hmm. So um, oh yeah, I, I have I have used error. Let me time out for a second. To think about this. I should probably go back. I'm trying to think. I, I, I waded into this territory of promises that I didn't mean to. I almost want to like start this over because I, I do need to come. So like, like I do need to. I mean, it is going to be something. There's no way around it. This is why ML5 exists, because when I've been working on this stuff for ML5, I've been kind of like hiding all of the await async stuff and just using callbacks. But promises are the way of the world, aren't they? I'm, in a couple of years, am I just going to all these, if I'm still using callbacks in the older style, am I just going to be, hmm. I don't know. I don't know the answers to these questions. Um, but What's interesting here is all the data comes back in a one-dimensional array, which I guess is kind of normal because I'm asking for it as just the raw data again. Um, there's also the get function, right? I'm just curious about this. Like if I say um, get, does that work? I think that's how I can get one. Yeah, so nine, that gives me 94. Can I do something like this? 46, ah, yeah. But wait, oh no, was it just giving me, whoops, undefined. So shouldn't I be able to get, if it's three dimensions, I don't know. But I can do this, get 28, and that should be 10, because this is 29 and this is 10. So there's also get, and get hap, I guess because get you're only looking up one at a time, that doesn't need a callback or a promise. Callbacks are dead, long live promise. Got it. Got it. Um, do tutorials. Okay, it would never be 2D or 3D. It stores things itself. Right, it's always the 2D, the shape is really a concept for us. Ultimately, the data is just a list of numbers. Okay. So, Okay, back to recap. This is what the tensor is 
and this is it, this is the way that we're thinking about the tensor and how the data is stored and the print function allows us to see that very easily in the console if i want access to the data the data sync function will just give me all of that stuff ultimately just as a list of numbers because this idea of the different the shapes and the dimensions is really for you know, us as human beings to think about and, and store it, but ultimately it's just a bunch of numbers. So I should also mention that in addition to data sync, there is also a get function. So if I were to say um, uh, tense.get and I were to say zero, we would see the, I've got the number 80, which is right there. And if I were to say one, I've got the number 41. And if I were to say, uh, you know, uh, 29, which would be the uh, last one, I've got the number 47. So the get is another way I can start to pull that stuff out. Data sync, data, and I need to come back <laughs> and I probably should add something about like what we need to support some of this stuff that I haven't really talked about is a video on promises, promises, and also one on um, uh, await and async. Uh, and promises are, oh, I, pfft. I went too, I went too high again. Ah, I don't, let's, don't worry everybody. We're just Mathieu to the rescue. I really should add an addendum here, which is that in order to support this material that I'm covering, at some point I need to come back and make a video on uh, promises and how the arrow syntax is often typically used with promises and this then function. So this is something I need to come back and do some additional content on, as well as await and async. Because if you wanna work with this particular library, how these new ways of handling synchronous and asynchronous things in JavaScript are kind of key foundational elements. So I've got to come back and talk about this. I would suspect that Fun Fun Function has some nice videos on these topics, but I don't know. So maybe I'll link to those in this video's description. Okay, but the point of what I was saying is, what if what I wanted to do right now is I wanted to change some of the numbers? For example, I wanted to do the equivalent of saying something like tense.set 0 to uh, 10. In other words, I'm trying, sort of, I'm, this doesn't exist, but what if what I wanted to do is say like, oh, whatever number is in the first spot in the tensor, I want to change it to something else. Well, I actually can't do that. These tensors, once you've created them, are immutable, and that means the values can never, ever be changed. This is different than this like const declaration, which just means you can't like reassign a variable name, but you can, might be able to like change the internal data of an object. That's different. These tensors absolutely cannot be changed. So if you need to change the values and you might in a kind of learning system you're building, right? What if you're storing all the weights of a matrix in a tensor and you want to adjust those weights? rather than copying into new tensor to new tensor. This is where the concept of a tf.variable comes in. So I can say const var, oh I shouldn't say, <laughs> const v tense, oh boy this is getting really weird, tf variable tense. I can take a tensor and make it into a variable by passing it through tf.variable. So let's just look at this and sort of see what's there. And we, oops, us, uh, wait, we don't want this set thing. And you can see, now this looks very similar. It has a shape, it has a data type, but it's now stored differently. This is because TensorFlow.js as a kind of low level library man managing web, the sort of data using the graphics card intensively um, really needs to do different things. It has to manage the memory differently if the stuff is never going to change versus if it's going to change. And so if I go now to tensorflow.js and I look here at tf variable, we can see um, this is now something um, that has a new parameter called trainable. So in fact, you can add this thing called an optimizer to it and adjust it. So that's an important thing I wanted to mention. Um, and I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. If I need to use a TF variable later, we'll come back and look at when, when I might want to use a TF variable versus just a TF tensor. Um, uh, 
dun, 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 dun. Okay, so I'm just taking a pause here for another little edit. I feel like I can do as many pauses and edits as I want now because I did that coding challenge in 15 minutes. Hmm. Also, I need to have one more piece of melon. Don't worry, this is the last piece of melon. Oh. Mm. Memory management. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the next piece of this, which is memory management. So let's say I'm going to now all of a sudden take, I'm going to get rid of this variable thing, and I'm going to take all of this code and I'm going to put it in draw. What does that mean? This means I am making a new tensor, 30 or 60 frames per second. It's going to run 30 frames per second every time through draw. So let's, let's go and do that. Ooh. Oh, and I don't, where's the, oh, I don't need this. In fact, I can get rid of all this stuff right now. So again, th this, this code isn't doing anything, but it's going to, I'm going to make new tensors every time through draw. So here it is, chugging along. So how do I, somebody, somebody must know, there's probably a way, right? Can I go to like for memory? Uh, heap snapshot, sure. Take snap, take snapshot. Ooh. Well, yeah. All right, somebody, somebody help me out here. Can I, should I use the task manager? Whoops. Task manager. Uh, I want to see the fact that I have like a memory leak here. Is this going to show it? Yeah. So let's make this more extreme. Um, okay. So this code is running, running, running. And what I want to do is check how much memory it's using. Now there, there is this, um, there are different like memory and performance uh, evaluation tools that I can use in the developer console. I'm going to do something a little simpler right now. I'm just going to go here to the task manager in Chrome. And in task manager, I'm going to, is, I'm going to wait a minute. It's going to take a minute to wake up here. But what we can see is the memory footprint. So the browser as a whole, I have, a tens I have the TensorFlow.js website. And then this is the tab for my code. And also there's like a GPU process running. So what I want to do is look at this. 75.8, 0.9, 76 0.3, <laughs> 0.4. So this is actually just going, it's going up kind of slowly, but it's going up, it's never going back down. If you are writing software where the usage of memory just keeps increasing over time and never stops, this is what can be known as a memory leak. I have to pause for a second. I don't know if Nikhil, I don't think Nikhil is watching today. I forgot the tweet that I started this. Um, Nikhil is one of the creators of TensorFlow.js. Is this memory actually the right thing to look at? Because what I want to show is how the, um, like would that actually show up here if it's using like the GPU memory? Like is this, which is different, like, is it actually this that I should be looking at, GPU process, that's going, well, let's see. What I'm gonna do is, let's change this to be, um, so this is two by five by three, so it's 15 by two, if we do it um, 15 by, like, by 100, let's just do a lot more, and let's, let's be really extreme about it. I gotta come back and do this. Um, I suspect, I mean, it's certainly going up a lot faster. So maybe it is. 
the GPU process is staying stable, and this is going like way up way faster. Right, I would have thought it would be on, listed under the GPU process. Yeah, but look at that. But you can show GPU memory by right clicking on the header of the Chrome Task Manager and choosing GPU memory. I'm trying to right click on the header of the Task Manager. I'm not seeing how to do that. Whoops. Oh, Nikhil is in the chat. No, that's a different Nikhil. <laughs> that's a different Nikhil. <laughs> well, hello, Nikhil Savalia. <laughs> different Nikhil than Nikhil Thorat, unless Nikhil Thorat is in the chat. Table header row. Oh, there we go. Uh, memory footprint, GPU memory. It's interesting because the memory leak is clearly here. Looked all over and couldn't find, right? That's clearly the memory leak. But the GPU memory is tiny and this is stable. I mean, let's, hold on, let's, I mean, let's be a bit more thoughtful here. Let me do this. Because it's just not garbage collecting. Oops. Sorry that I have to take this break here. Like, does this stay stable now? I, I'm not making anything. Yeah. So this is a bit of a mystery to me. Why the memory leak would show up here under memory footprint. Is it possible that I don't have GPU enabled? How would I test that? Um, override software, overrides the built-in software and enables GPU un unsupported, no. That's enabled. I think I have GPU enabled. Oh, GPU only gets involved once you train. You can't fill up the CPU memory either. It's just a gate. You won't see the GPU process. Yeah, the GPU is enabled. I think that K Weekman writes, I think the GPU only gets involved once you train. The tensors are only moved to GPU memory when you start doing calculations. Why else would it be moved to GPU memory? That does make sense. That is a very, very good point. Got it, got it. The GPU is just for computing. Okay, so like if I were to do something like, yeah, but this still is a memory leak. Like watch, now, So maybe I don't need to get into um, like right now I fixed the memory leak with by calling dispose. This is what I wanted to demonstrate. So I think I'm actually demonstrating this quite well. Wish there was a key command to get the Did I? This is the one that should be going up. Yeah. 
Before it was like crazily going up and now it's not anymore. <laughs> Interesting. Can I keep this? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. All right. Come back. Okay. Matthew, I'm going to be, this is going to rewind all the way back. Um, Okay. So there are a lot of tools uh, here in the, um, in the Chrome developer tools where I can evaluate performance and memory in a very detailed way. What I'm actually just gonna do is go to this task manager. And what you'll see here with the task, task manager is it's showing me, I have the developer tools open, I have TensorFlow.js, uh, the, the, the page, the web page for TensorFlow.js, and I have my, my sketch open in this particular tab here. So what I wanna do here, let me just save this code and uh, move this over here and hit refresh. So we can look and we can see like, okay, well, what is the memory footprint? This is the memory footprint right now of that, of my sketch, how much memory it's using. Now there's a question of, is the memory a CPU, GPU? Uh, and that's an interesting piece of complexity. And it just sort of went down. The truth of the matter is I'm like not doing very much. <laughs> Let me go back and change this to like, this was two five by three matrices. So what if I made 10,000 of them? And so that would be uh, 15, uh, 10,000 times 15 numbers that I need. And uh, let's go back and uh, let me move this over here and hit refresh. And now, if I take a look at the tab, oh. it's, you can see it's starting to go up. Hold on. Um, why, why is this misbehaving with me and not demonstrating what I wanted it to demonstrate? Do I have to kill the task manager and reopen it? I'm gonna try this again. Shift escape. Oh. So weird. Sometimes it memory leaks and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. It just took a little while. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to refresh this page. I'm going to pull up the task manager. Shift escape does not work for me. I thought it might. Um, and let's take a look at the memory footprint for the P5 TensorFlow sketch I'm running. And let's see what happens to it. Not much. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. definitely doing a lot of work. It'll take a while where it triggers the JS garbage collector until it can't anymore. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this was a sort of pointless demonstration. Um, Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it kicks in now. 
Um, does it kick in if I don't, yeah, so maybe did it run out of memory somewhere else and then started to fill up somewhere else? Wow, that's crazy. Um, so I wonder, let me try doing an operation. So what if I create, I'm going to have to, what if I create um, two tensors? two tensors, and then uh, let's look at, um, let's do the matrix multiplication. So I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of the tutorial again. We're, we're in, um, this is, this must be um, element wise. Yeah, this element wise. Um, A dot multiply B. So let's just try that. Um, so let me call these A and B. A equals A dot multiply B. So let's take a look at this. Let's actually just, uh, just curious here. All right, it's doing something. It's doing that. Like if I do an operation, maybe I needed to talk about operations before I talked about memory management. There we go. Look at this. There we go. That's, so I think whoever was explaining in the chat that it doesn't actually start to use the GPU's memory unless it, you're doing an operation was right. And now, if I change these to, yeah, there we go. This is the demonstration that I'm looking for. By the way, Amit, someone named Amit in the chat asked, how come you don't practice this stuff beforehand? I, you know, it, I actually, well, so I have different ways of doing things. Um, but for many of my videos and tutorials, I, the practice was really like teaching a course about it for years and years and years. And this is not something I've taught before. Um, so I'm actually just figuring it out, unfortunately, as I go here. Um, but yes, I could see why that might make sense. You might prefer to just come back and watch the edited videos, which a lot of this debugging gets taken out. Um, okay, so now I'm rethinking this whole thing where maybe what I wanted to do was talk about operations first. So I could leave my weird, hmm. So when this gets published, I could leave the amount of time I spent, well, I could actually just, we could just cut all of that. <laughs> I could, we could just cut all of that and I could do, um, I could start with looking at operations. What makes the most sense? I'm looking for your feedback here. So I could just cut all of that. That was an interesting exploration. And I'm just gonna move on. Video three is gonna be operations. And boy, I hear the fan going nuts on this. Um, so let me just say no loop here real quick. Um, so that's option one. Oh, what time is it? It's noon already. Oh, crap. Um, option number two is leave all of my talking about variables and this kind of weirdness and then cut right to me saying, actually, I'm going to talk about operations before memory management. Switch those, talk about operations. And then, I mean, I probably could do all of these in one video, to be honest, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, variables, operations, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make this all, because I'm not really doing a comprehensive tutorial here. I'm just going to talk about, in one video, variables, operations, and memory management. Um, and I'm just going to talk about operations first. That's what I'm going to do. I think that makes sense. Uh, 
Um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to talk about TF Tidy in, I was going to show Dispose first, and then, um, okay. um, all right. Got it. So me, I am, so me is writing, this makes a lot of sense. Whoops, I'm in the wrong camera. That the library keeps references to every tensor so that they can't be garbage collected. Right, the, the, the tensors can't be garbage collected because what if you want them to copy them onto the GPU, but they don't actually go onto the GPU until, um, until, you, do, um, until you actually have to do an operation. Okay. Okay. Um, Loppy234 says, should there be a video on matrix maths? I already made all those videos, so this is really uh, picking up on that. So, okay. So, um, Mathieu, if you're watching, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to always just come back and do all this over again, which I'm happy to. The way that I'm going to have this work right now is everything up until basically I came over here and did this can stay in the video. And then we're going to cut to me saying, I'm going to change how I'm teaching this, and then I'm going to go straight to um, operations. So in the code, I need to back myself all the way back out to where I had variable and how all this stuff is set up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Simon writes, make th video three just variables and video four operates. I could make video three just variables, but wasn't that just like four minutes? I guess people were happy to watch a four minute video, but I sort of feel like for me, my, the way that I'm kind of doing things, the videos need to be like 15 to 20 minutes. That's kind of like the chunk. Maybe that was like 20 minutes. And I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, <laughs> I was feeling so confident. Well, who knows? I'm just doing my best. Okay. Where's the eraser? Hi, so I, I'm back actually with a weird edit point because I just went down a rabbit hole of trying to figure something out about memory management and I discovered that actually the memory management stuff makes a lot more sense to talk about after I've already looked at operations. So let's actually, I'm going to switch this order here. And right now in this video that you are watching, I'm going to talk about operations next. And then maybe I'll move, maybe I'll take a break and move on to memory management in the next video, something like that. Okay. So let me come back and talk about operations. So what do I mean when I'm saying operations? Not the kind of operation like I had here on my elbow recently, not that recently, a year ago. Um, <laughs> we don't, that doesn't need to be in the video. So <laughs> now it's too late. I already, I already did it. All right. So let's talk about operations. Hmm. Okay. What do I mean by operations? So if I come back to, um, whoops. Ah. If I come back to the uh, tensorflow.js web page, there's actually a part of the sidebar here, part of the API, which is all about operations. And when I think about operations, that's what I mean. Mathematical operations that I want to perform on the tensor itself. What if I want to double every number in the tensor? Or I want to take two tensors and element-wise multiply every number by every other number? What if I want to do matrix multiplication between those two tensors? Now, this would probably merit a whole video series about linear algebra and matrix math. <laughs> Luckily or unluckily for you, I made a whole series about that already. So you could pause here and go and watch that. I would also refer you to the three blue, one brown video series on linear algebra, which is excellent. So rather than get into the weeds of all of the mathematical pieces themselves, I just want to kind of like look at a few and see how you would use these. Okay, so let's for example say I want to use TF add. So if I click on that, I can see, ah, add two tensors element-wise, A plus B. What does element-wise mean? Well, what that means, just to sort of recap, is if I have 
two matrices, A, B, C, D, and I have another one, E, F, G, H, and I want to add them together and I want to see the result, element-wise means A plus E, B plus F, right? I just take the ones that are in the same spot and add them together. So we could create, we could do that right now in our code, and I could say, I'm going to call this tensor A, and I'm just, this is a little bit silly, but I'm just going to make a second one that's with the same numbers in it. Obviously, I more likely would have two tensors with two different values. And then what I want to do is say TF, wait, how do I, let me look at this. Uh, oh, A add B, sorry. So what I want to do is I'm going to say const C equals A dot add B, which by the way would be exactly the same as saying B dot add A. In this case, with other operations, the order of the matrix, the matrix, the tensor, sorry, I shouldn't say matrix, matrix, matrices. Um, so th that, that really could play a role. So if I say A dot B, and I were to say A print, B print, C print, and I come back here and go and hit refresh, we're going to see, you know, here's A, here's B, they're the same, and then every number is doubled, basically, because I took A plus B. So really, obviously, I should make two different random sets of numbers, but this is, this is how an operation works. And depending on what you're doing, you need different mathematical operations. Let's see if there's any other ones we want to look at. Um, maximum, minimum, modulus, power. what would be a good one to look at? Square difference is a good one. Then do I want to, I don't, the basic math stuff I'm not going to look at right now. I think I should look at matrix multiplication probably or transpose. Mm. Um, reduction, minimum, oh there's so much stuff here. Okay, I'm not going to go through all this. Let's look at, all right. So as you can see, there are a lot of things. We could subtract, multiply, divide. There's maximum, minimum, modulus, power, square, difference. All these would be interesting to pursue, and I might come back and do more videos about particular mathematical op operations. But really, I think just showing you add, hopefully now you could kind of like look at the documentation and see what each one does. I think it's worth at least doing, um, and there's lots of other math functionality, but I think it's worth looking at matrix multiplication, tf.matmul, because this is a really key concept in um, building a neural network, how to do this uh, weighted sum of all of the inputs and all of the weights passed through. You really need matrix multiplication if you go back and watch my other videos. So let's look at this one. So here we can see a dot matmol. So really it's just another function, but we're going to run to an interesting thing here. What if I were to try and I don't need to print, I'm not going to bother printing A and B. Let's just try this right now. So I'm going to do, wait, this would work. A dot multiply, M-U-L-B, because that's doing element-wise. A times, you know, in this case, A times E, B times F, C times G. Let's go back. And I'm going to hit refresh. Oh, it worked. So I guess the way... Oh, wait, of course it works. I forgot that I was doing element-wise. Of course, of course it worked. I'm doing element-wise multiplication. I'm trying to demonstrate here that if I actually want to do matrix multiplication, which is a totally different thing, uh, matmol, is that what it was called? Now, there we go. Oh, I love, this is like my favorite error. <laughs> this is very similar. These are the kinds of errors you're going to run to all the time. We saw this before. Error, matmol, inputs must be ranked two, got ranks three and three. The reason why this is, is when you do, sorry, I'm seeing a super chat. Thank you to Daniel. Hello to Brazil. <laughs> this is going to make a editing point for, um, I also, I also wanted to, um, oh, you can get the amount of tensors in memory by saying tf.memory. Ah, oh, thank you. That's going to be really useful, me. I am to me. Thank you. Uh, Matrix multiplication, hold on, I, um, the columns and rows, um, 
that the number of columns in the first one equals the number of rows in the second one. Yeah. When you do matrix multiplication, the number of columns in the first matrix, A, has to match the number of rows in the second one. And by the way, <laughs> you can't even have like a, sh <laughs> this is totally, you can't have a rank three, you can't do matrix multiple. So this, by, by the way, this whole thing is flawed because this is only going to work. So let's, if I have a rank two uh, tensor or a, basically a matrix, a two-dimensional array. So <laughs> now, <laughs> let's get a different error message. Now, error in math, so first of all, matrix multiplication is only for uh, matrices in two dimensions, tensors in two dimensions, and then the error here is the inner shapes three and five of the tensors with shapes five, three, and five, three are in transpose, uh, so what's this error message about? To do, matrix multiplication, the number of columns in the first one must match the number of rows in the second matrix. So actually in here this would work. This would actually work because these are two by two and so the columns here matches, uh, matches the rows here. Um, and again, if you go back to my video on matrix multiplication, you'll see why in more detail about this. So, but just to follow up here, what I must do now in order to do matrix multiplication is I probably would have shape for A. I could transpose one of them, but let's do this first. So I'm going to do shape A, and then I'm going to do shape B. This is a good time to cover transpose uh, and shape B. And now this should give me something. There we go. There's my new matrix. And out of matrix multiplication, if I am doing, excuse me, a 5 by 3 multiplied with a 3 by 5, I end up getting a 5 by 5 matrix, which is correct. Now, another way I could have done this, by the way, is if I used the same shape for both of them, if I backed in here, I should be able, let's do this, okay, I should be able to say B dot, now let's just see what happens if I say B dot transpose. No. So here's the thing. Remember, these things are immutable. So even transposing it, I probably have to say const uh, bb equals b transpose, and then I can do a dot, uh, a dot matmol bb, and there we go. So what does transpose do with a matrix? Transpose, if I have a two by three matrix, we'll take that matrix and transpose the numbers into a three by two matrix. So again, why do I, I'm not doing anything of any value or meaning here. If you go back, you could probably go back as an exercise. If you want an exercise right now, go to my toy neural network, look at nn.js, go through all of the matrix math that's in that and see if you can rewrite that with the TensorFlow, the TF operations. I don't, know that, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you want to just do everything you could possibly do in this world, that's something you could try. And maybe I'll try to publish something which is like an answer key to that. I don't know. You could ask me in the comments or somebody could make one and then I could post it. All right. So I think this is about where I want to stop right now. Again, this is not meant to be comprehensive. I just want to talk through what are the pieces here. We know that there are tensors. Tensors are n-dimensional groups of numbers with we can also, those are immutable, they can never change. If we need them to change, we could use this thing called a variable. Maybe we need to see an actual scenario where we need that variable. Hopefully that'll come up in one of my videos in the future, but you could try it yourself. And then we can also perform operations. We can perform operations like take these tensors and take this tensor and add this one or double this or find the maximum number in this one. And there's plenty, plenty more matrix multiplication. So I encourage you to explore all of those and maybe I'll come back and go through some of them as we need them. But I just want to give you an overview of what's there in the tensorflow.js API itself. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about something very important because I have not been paying attention at all to how whenever I create a tensor, I'm using memory. In, of the computer, and sometimes I'm using maybe I'm using memory that's you know in the RAM. Sometimes I'm using the GPU memory. What's going on with all that? So I want to in the next video specifically talk about memory management and how to make sure if I'm making all these tensors and doing all these operations, how I how to make sure I avoid having a memory leak.
Okay, I'll see you in that video. Okay, so, um, um, okay, so I think, where are we now, 1220? I have about an hour. Um, okay, so I think that, you know, that wasn't my best, finest work, but I think we're gonna, I'm gonna keep it. Um, and I can always come back, so I have to reconsider whether I want to kind of redo a discussion of variables and operations. But I think something can be pieced together from that. Mathieu can do some magical work. So now I'm going to start with memory management. All right, it's time. Oh, oh boy, it's time. You know, uh, hold on, I think I need a tissue. I just had a little piece of snot gurgle up there. Ah, oh, here's one, this I can use. Hold on, I'll be right back. I should mute my microphone. Apologies for the noise. Okay, I'm back. I just saw a question in the live chat that's going on right now saying, what's a memory leak? <laughs> Guess what? You're gonna find out what a memory leak is in this video. In particular, how to manage memory if you're using TensorFlow.js. Now here's the thing, I live in a world where I generally program either in processing, which is built on top of Java, or I program in Java, in P5, with the P5 library in the language JavaScript. Um, and I don't have to worry about memory management. I mean, I mean, often do, but most of the time I don't. There's something, my friend, my friend live, lives in the computer. Their, their name is Garbage Collector. And the Garbage Collector just kind of is always there checking to see if I'm using any of my variables anymore. And if I'm not, collects that memory and reallocates it for somebody else. A memory leak is something in your program which continues to allocate memory over and over again and yet where, where you, don't need to, you don't need to remember that stuff. And so you're filling up the computer's memory and it's just to infinity and eventually the memory will be full and your program will crash, your computer will crash. I mean, maybe it's not a leak technically if you, keep, if you, if you need to save all that stuff, but most of the time, like if you're creating a variable that's just um, keeping track of the computer's, the, a score in a game and you're reallocating new memory for that score over and over and over again, uh, and you don't need the old score, you should deallocate that memory. And if you're programming in like a low level language like C or C++, you sometimes have to manage this memory yourself. Higher level languages that are more, that have a layer of abstraction, the browser is there to protect us, I think, uh, the Java virtual machine, they have a garbage collector that handles some of this memory management. TensorFlow.js is in this sort of funny in-between place. I mean, we're programming in JavaScript, but TensorFlow.js is doing some highly manual management of the memory of your GPU to do all this fast math operation. So we have to make sure we carefully think about how we're allocating memory and explicitly deallocate memory. So that's what I want to look at. So let's take a look. We're going to do, this is going to be exciting. We're going to make a memory leak happen and then we're going to fix it. Yay. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so this is the code that I had before. Um, let's actually keep this. This is kind of interesting. Um, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm gonna take all of this code and I'm going to put it in draw. What's draw, you might ask? So again, there's no reason for me, there's no particular reason why I need to be using P5, the P5 library with TensorFlow.js right now. But one of the things the P5 library has, it has this animation loop. If you write the function draw, it's going to execute that function 30 times per second, 60 frames per second, depending on the situation. So I just want to hit save, and now I'm just going to hit refresh. So in theory, this is chugging along right now. So the question is, how do I look at how much, I mean, there's, I don't see anything. Like I could, like maybe what I want to do is do like console.log hello, just to make sure it's like running. And we can see there's, I'm seeing hello over and over again, over here, over and over again in the console. So it looks like it's, the program's running fine, it's running fast, no problem. Let's look and see what memory it's actually using. So there's a lot of tools up here, oops, no, here, 
that I don't really know how to use uh, for evaluating uh, uh, the performance of your web page uh, in the developer tools. I'm gonna go in, up here under window and go to task manager. One of the nice things about, ta oh my goodness, we definitely have a memory leak already. <laughs> I think, and I think I filled it up. <laughs> I think probably the GP, so the memory footprint, so I, let me scroll this over here. So we can see these are the various things the browser is, this is the browser as a whole. So this is the regular computer's memory, the TensorFlow documentation tabs using 94 megabytes, but the GPU, which uh, is just filled its way up to two gigabytes really fast. Let's try, um, let's try setting the frame rate to, uh, to one and refresh the page. And let me go back to the task manager. And maybe now we can see, oh, Wow, it's already at two gigabytes? <laughs> Am I gonna go down this rabbit hole again? <laughs> let's, so let's just be clear about stuff. Let me comment all of this out. Let me comment out all of the tensorflow.js stuff. And let me hit refresh again. Let me go back to the task manager. I think I might have to, I think the task manager might not refresh its values. Ah, you know what, if I don't reopen the, no? <laughs> wow, why do I have to, like, let me, hold on, just bear with me for a second. Let me quit Chrome. It's crazy how, I, I want to use the tf.memory thing, but I wanted to just look at it in the, um, I wanted to look at it in the, um, There we go. Okay, so I, something was going on with the browser. <laughs> um, probably I had filled up the memory somewhere else. So I just actually quit Chrome and restarted it. Um, so now you can see the GPU is using 32.8 megabytes of memory, which isn't that much. And maybe over time it's gonna like go up because I'm making, oh, oh, actually, no, it's not, because I also, in testing things, I commented out, sorry, I commented out all the tensor stuff. So let me put the tensor stuff back in, right, and now let's take a look at the GPU memory. So I'm gonna close the task manager, I'm gonna hit refresh, now I'm gonna go to the task manager again, and I'm gonna look here, that's the, I'm gonna look here at this number. So we can see I'm using some memory, Maybe it's gonna go up, maybe not. But the thing is, I've got very, I'm, I'm using like a very small amount of numbers. So really what TensorFlow.js is designed to work with, the reason why, is to work with large amounts of numbers. So let me go back to my code and let me just say, what if instead of having 15 numbers, I'm gonna have 15,000, which would be 500 by 300. So I'm gonna have a five, two 500 by 300 matrices, transpose one of them, and do matrix multiplication. So let's do that. Let me now, let me hit refresh one more time. This is very hard to demonstrate. Oops. Oh, uh, not, not 150,000, 15,000, whoops. Oh, that should actually be 150,000. Let's do that, 150,000, that's what I meant. Let me hit refresh. Let me go back to the task manager, and now, Let's look at that memory. It's going up. Little by little, it's going up. Now, let's say I was trying to do that. 30 frames per second. Let's get rid of this frame rate one. Hit save, close the task manager. The task manager, I feel like, needs to be, and now I'm gonna go back and open up the task manager. This is my, my last time demonstrating this. And now, I really wanna see this memory leak. I wanna see this number go up. 63, 66. 68, so you can see the memory is leaking, right? I don't need to keep storing all these, to keep track of all these tensors that I've been making every time through draw. And maybe there might be some oh, um, kind of, oops, I wanna sort by memory a minute, oops. Where, where, where am I here? GPU, yeah. Um, so you can see this number, it's going up and up and up. So, and actually, <laughs> it's wasting a lot of memory, regular memory also, ooh, oh boy. Um, up and up and up we go. Ah, oh, sorry. Mathieu, maybe edit out like the last five, 10 seconds of what I've been saying. Don't have to just slide to the left of the page so it sticks out and then click back and forth to get it focused, okay.
Yeah, I probably need to restart Chrome, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to just do like an edit point. And like I'm going to let this go real high. Matthew, you can kind of go back as much as you can to like get rid of all my awkwardness. And now I think we're in good shape. Okay, so I let this run for a little bit. We can really see the memory leak is happen happening. You know, this is only going to go up. It's never going to go down. So one of the things, now there's, I, you know, I'm using the task manager. The truth of the matter is, um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to type in here no loop just to shut this off for a second. Um, the truth of the matter is tensorflow.js provides us with a mechanism to check this as well. So I can also say tf.memory. Let's actually go to the API. Uh, API reference, memory, uh, TF memory, and I can look at um, the number of bytes allocated, the number of tensors, this type kind of thing. So let's actually look at, let's, let's look at number of tensors. Um, so I can say, I think TF memory dot num tensors. I can do, oops, uh, maybe it's just, is it a function or is it a property? Let's try this, console log this. Um, Oh, let me get rid of the hello. So you can see here, these are all the tensors being stored and they're going up and up and up. The good news is there is a way to get rid of tensors that you don't need anymore. And I'm going to write that down. There are two functions you want to know about for memory management. One is called dispose. And there might be more, and I've just written off the edge. <laughs> Let me try that again. There are two functions. Oh, probably, there might be more than this, but there's two functions that I want to talk about as they relate to memory management. There is the function called dispose, and there is the function called tidy. And they're, they're kind of, they're, they do the same thing. They clean up memory that's not used, but they do it in a different way. So let's look at how that works. So coming back over here, if I go into my code and I say, like, these are all my tensors, A, B, 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 and C. I'm going to call this B underscore T, because that's actually, like, sometimes I feel like a naming convention, like transposed B. <laughs> this is my own naming convention. And I'm going to say A dot dispose, B dot dispose, C dot dispose, and B underscore T dot dispose. So this is me manually dispose after, uh, you know, this is like do something meaningful here. Like I want to do something meaningful with these tensors and then I'm done with them. I want to dispose them. So now let's run this again. I'm going to hit refresh and look, zero, 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 zero. There are no tensors stored in memory. And in fact, if I go to the task manager, we should see load up please, that the GPU process is not growing. It's at 229 megabytes and it's not getting any higher. There is no longer a memory leak. We have correct fixed the memory leak. The thing is, so, so that's good, that's step one. We've, oops. We've talked about dispose. The thing is, you might be writing a program using TensorFlow.js where you're just making tensors like crazy. You're just tensor happy. And so really having to manually keep track of everything and call dispose on everything can become rather unwieldy. And that's where tftidy comes in. So tftidy is a function that you don't call on a particular tensor, but it allows you to wrap a bunch of code in that will get cleaned up when it ends. And what I mean by that is I can say tf tidy my stuff and then I can write a function called my stuff where I do all of this. So what this is doing is it's saying execute this function my stuff but make sure you tidy it up after you're done. So let me run this and see what happens. And you can see I still have zeros. Um, and just to be sure that this function is running, let's put hello inside that function. Whoop. 
and now we can see that function is running. Here's the thing, you're not going to see anywhere in any TensorFlow.js examples it written this way. So you notice here, I'm just going to do a couple quick steps here. I wrote a named function and passed it into tftidy. I could, more likely you're going to see an anonymous function that doesn't have a name, passed into tftidy like this, and even more likely than that, you're going to see that arrow syntax. So I encourage you to check my uh, video on arrow syntax, but this is what you're typically going to see. This is, ah, inside of the draw loop, every time I want to do some stuff, some meaningful stuff with my tensors, but whatever I do, I want that to be cleaned up. And I don't think it will clean up variables. I don't know if somebody can fact check me on this, but I think the variable is something that gets held in memory. Does TF tidy clean up? I don't know why I bothered to say that. All right. So um, maybe cut that part out. All right, let's test this one last time. We've got TF tidy. I'm going to hit refresh. And once again, zero tensors. Let's put one constant test equals TF. Oh, no. Oh, look at this. This should be tensors 2D, by the way. I'm surprised it didn't pick up. It didn't give me an error there. Oh, I think that's the same error that I filed a bug report at. Um, and that's been fixed, maybe. And maybe I'm not using the most recent version of TensorFlow.js. Is there a 0.11? No, but when there is one, that will be fixed. <laughs> uh, just ignore me. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, TF tensor 2D values shape. And I'm going to run this. Uh, oops, to lowercase d. And now we can see, ah, I'm creating all these tensors. I have a memory leak. These are getting cleaned up, but I could, you know, manually dispose of this one, I everything's been cleaned up, or last piece, this one could go inside of tidy, and then there we go. All right, um, and by the way, I'm, I, the chat is reminding me that there is a function called tfkeep, so I probably, if inside of tf tidy, I could use tfkeep if I have all this stuff happening, but I want to make sure to keep this one. So this can get very complex very fast, and I'm really trying to just give you a cursory overview here, and hopefully as I start to build some examples where I'm trying to do stuff with TensorFlow.js, it'll make a bit more sense as we're using this stuff in the wild. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in another, oh, what's next on my list? Um, oh, the Layers API. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the Layers API next. Okay. All right. Um, what time is it? 1236. I'm definitely not getting to XOR this morning. If I could come back, last, I said this last weekend, I didn't come back. Small chance I could come do a little more this afternoon. So, Layers API. Whew. That's a big topic. I almost would rather just do like, I wonder, if, I wonder if I should come back to that another day. I think I'm gonna come back to that another day because that's a big topic and that's really paired with the XOR things. It's 12.36. Um, I'm looking at the chat. Hello, Hong Kong. Um, so what's going to be, what have, I, what have I done? Let's come back over here and check. So I did this now. We talked about variables, we talked about operations, we talked about memory management. Okay. The layers API, so much to discuss. I guess I could do a video about the layers API. <laughs> I just don't want to, I feel tired. The other thing I could do is I could go do that um, water ripple coding challenge. Um, let's put it to, let's, I'm gonna do, let's put it to a straw pool. Um, or I could go now, which would increase my chances of coming back this afternoon and I might feel a little bit more refreshed, but um, let's see here. I wanna get some water anyway, so l layers, API, this is not the, oh, 
switch, layers, API, uh, water, ripples, coding challenge. Um, so uh, just to be clear, the layers API means just like another one of videos in this similar style where I'm like, this is the layers API, this is what the things are named, this is what they do, here's a quick little like try something out but not really using it. Like I will eventually use it doing any of these uh, particular examples like XOR, color predictor, or doodle classifier. Um, and the water ripples coding challenge is, Uh, the water ripples coding challenge is um, trying to follow this old article from days of yore to make a little like water ripples simulation. I don't know if you can see this. But, uh, you can't really see this very well, but um, so that's, those are your choices. So I will give this a little bit of time. Um, and maybe I can get, some, I want to get some water. So I'm going to be back. in um, I am going to oh well I'm not going to take 15 minutes to get water <laughs> Forget it, you don't need a timer. <laughs> oh, well, I could also just put it here. Um, I'm gonna be back, I'm gonna try to get some water. I don't think I have a cup up here. So um, this microphone is about to get muted um, while I go get some water, and I'll be back in about five minutes, and I'll do just one more thing this morning. I mean, the music goes on for four minutes. Hope I'll be back before the music shuts off.
You know what must have happened? It, what must have happened is when I went so far away, it lost the connection. So, uh, I don't know what that would have been. But it was definitely muted the whole time. So, it must have like lost the, cause I went pretty far away. I went like all the way around to the opposite side of the building and it's connected wirelessly. So, huh, okay. Um, look what I found though, paper towels. Um, so sorry if there was like a horrible sound thing that happened there. I guess I should know that now. I should, I should know that by now. All right, let's take a look. Water Ripple Coding Challenge. Hey, only 67 people voted? <laughs> uh, all right. This is probably a terrible idea for a variety of reasons, but we're going to attempt this Water Ripples Coding Challenge. So, Next time I do this, I should software mute it in uh, Wirecast, on OBS, like this. Uh, wait. Yeah. Muted, I'm not muted, I'm not muted, okay. Um, all right. There also could have just been, no, I don't know, who knows. Um, okay, so I'm definitely gonna need, I'm gonna need the, whiteboard for this, but I want to keep my list. So, um, 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 oh, by the way, can I take a minute? I would like to take a minute of your time to just mention one of my uh, favorite uh, YouTubers, Simone Geertz. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Um, let's find her channel. Um, Simone it makes the lots of, I don't like to swear on my channel. Wow, look at all, she has a lot of subscribers. She makes the most amazing robots. Um, um, she's awesome. Check out her channel, subscribe to it, go back, watch all of her videos if you haven't seen it. I wanted to just plug her Patreon for a minute. Um, she uh, recently published a video about uh, a brain tumor that she has and she has an amazing, which is no surprise really, a completely amazing attitude about it um, and sense of humor in what is obviously an incredibly serious and difficult thing to go through. Uh, I, you know, if you watch her video if you want to uh, hear the medical explanation about it. I'm not qualified to speak for her or, or speak about it. But I do want to mention that I, I, did support, I did subscribe to her Patreon. I didn't know that she had one or it just hadn't occurred to me. Um, and I know that, you know, she's going to be on hiatus. You know, I was on hiatus for a couple months when I broke my elbow. But really, having surgery on my elbow to fix up some bones is nothing compared to uh, what she's going through with the, um, so I would encourage you, uh, if you can, to uh, subscribe to her Patreon. I mean, I have one too, but um, I think that if she, if she can have a lot of supporters through her Patreon, that'll hopefully help her get through this amount of time where I imagine she can't make videos for her channel. And if anybody else is a YouTuber who has some, or, or anybody else in the world has some ideas of ways of supporting Simone, I know she has a large, larger following than I do, certainly. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of people supporting her already, I'm sure, but if there's anybody has any ideas or things we can do to support her, I think that would be a nice thing to do. Okay, um, now, um, I am ready for this coding challenge. So this, I, this is, so let me, I'm, I'm gonna do this in processing. Um, I'm going to, Um, uh, call this water ripples. Oh, I don't know why am I, why in a million years am I starting this right now? I have no idea. 
Bye. Hello and welcome to a coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I am going to attempt to make a 2D water simulation. Now, you might be asking, how are you going to do so? So this is actually, I, I wrote this code. Not, I didn't invent this algorithm, but I wrote this code. It's got to be at least 10 years ago. This is one of the first things. This essay on how to create this algorithm for creating 2D water ripples has been on the internet for a really long time. In fact, it's not on the internet anymore. This was the URL, and this URL uh, Hugo.Elias, uh, it doesn't go anywhere. But thankfully, the Internet Archive, and I don't know who this person is who wrote this essay. Thank you, hello, if you're out there. <laughs> Get in touch, write in the comments. But um, this is a really fun algorithm, and it works. It's very, if, you, if you're looking for some background for it, you want to know a little bit about how pixels work, two-dimensional arrays maybe, cellular automata, this idea of a grid of cells with states. I've had a bunch of videos that I've made related to how this algorithm works that I will link to in this video's description. Excuse me. But what I'm going to attempt to do in this video is just read this web page and write the code that follows along exactly with what it's doing and see if we can get the result that is, on, that is described here to create 2D water ripples. So let's just get started. I apologize for how I'm gonna to have to read this out loud. Okay, blah, 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 narrative, 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 narrative. So firstly, you'll need two arrays of words, well, integers, okay. Um, so let's do that. So let me go open up processing. Processing, I always feel I have to say this, is a programming environment built on top of Java. More information at processing.org. Download this if you want to follow along. And I will create a JavaScript version of this that runs in the browser as well when I publish the code. All right, so let's set void setup, void draw. These are the sort of basic functions to control the flow of the program and processing. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to make two, uh, Two-dimensional, I'm just going to say like 100 by 100, just arbitrarily right now. Let's actually do a 200 by 200. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, water one, water two, because I don't know what those are going to be used for yet. I haven't looked at this in like 10 years. Uh, I'm going to say size 200, 200. Okay. So I have a window that is 200 by 200 pixels, and I have this these two-dimensional arrays. And I bet you could write like a super fast, crazy version of this with shaders or something. So Maybe you're watching this, you're gonna to wanna to do that later, but let's try to do this basically, just follow along. Okay, back to here. Um, that's right, these arrays will hold the state of the water. One holds the current state, the other holds the state from the previous frame. So let's actually call this current and uh, previous. Oh, why can't those have the same number of letters in them? No, preview, preview. So this is gonna be current and preview, whatever. No, that bothers me more, previous, okay. Um, it's important that you have two arrays since you need to know how the water has changed since the last frame. Buffer two, buffer one, buffer two. I could call them buffer one, buffer two. Anyway, data from the previous frame, blah, 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 blah. Damping, some integer between zero and one. So we need some, some so we need to have a damping. Uh, let's, let's try 0 0.9. So the beginning loop, what I need to do, well, first I need to, I need, I need to fill those arrays with some values. The truth of the matter is I think they're going to get filled by default with, um, um, with zeros, and I also want to, I think I want to keep track of the columns and rows in a variable. Oh, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. I lost my ability to type. No, that's right. Ah! All right, there we go. Um, uh, for every not, so let's, this is begin loop. So this is the, boy, this background is making it hard for you to see the algorithm. But for every non-edge element, so let's do that. For every non-edge element, what does that mean? For int x, x equals 1. Oh, let's actually use i and j. i equals 1. i is less than uh, columns minus 1, i plus plus. That is a way of looping through every non-edge element. And I'm gonna do the same thing with j. j is less than rows minus one and a j plus plus. All right. Uh, oh, and now what do I do? Let's just copy paste this and say, all right, so what this really means here is this is saying current, the current x 
y, which is really current i, j, is equal to the sum. I mean, you can see these are a bunch of neighbors. x minus 1, x plus 1, y plus 1, y minus 1. What this is really doing, if I come over here to the whiteboard, you'll have to excuse this. I'm doing some tutorials about TensorFlow.js. I didn't want to erase that. So that's still here in this coding challenge. Um, uh, basically, if this is my current ij, I want the new value that goes in this ij to be a function of its value as well as its neighbors to the right, to the top, to the left, and the bottom. So that's what's happening here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say uh, equals previous uh, x minus 1 y plus previous, oh, and it's not x. I'm using i and j, which now I regret making that decision. Oh, there's like a timer going off. Hold on. Sorry, everybody. That was a timer for when I had to go get a drink of water. I have to, oh, hold on. Uh, how do I just interact? Uh, all right. Uh, that timer wasn't there visible, was it? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Matthew, you can edit a little bit of this out if you can. All right, I, uh, J, uh, it's all plus, right? Now, let me go back here. Wait, these are being, are these being multiplied by each other? This is weird. Where are the pluses? I sort of assumed this was all being added together, right? It doesn't actually say. Let me see. Um, does it describe this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is addition. Um, well, let's, let's try it. It would make sense to add everything together. So i minus 1j, oh boy, i plus 1j, then uh, plus i, j minus 1 plus i, j plus 1, ugh, ugh. Come on, indent this the way that I like. <laughs> Plus, and then, so that this whole thing divided by two minus previous i j. So I think I got that right. So basically, um, and let's actually, let's just do this. So this should be all of it. I mean, I don't love the way this is auto formatted, but we'll live with it. I can actually put this on the next line might make me happier. So this is all of these added together. Previous I minus I minus one, I plus one, J minus one, J plus one, all added together divided by two minus what the current value is. So this is kind of like an image processing algorithm. You're saying like add up all the things around me and then subtract my value. Okay, now display buffer two and swap the buffers. Wow, this is a really, yeah, this, this coding challenge is going to be over soon. So what do I, what, what, what's one way I could display it? Hmm. Well, let's first set a background. And then while I'm doing this, I could say load pixels. And I could say update pixels, right? Because what I could do is I could use the value of current ij to be the pixel color. Yes. So I'm going to say uh, pixels. So let me first get an index value. Index equals i plus j times columns. This is an algorithm that I've talked about many, many times. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This has to be inside of the loop. Um, this particular algorithm I've talked about many times. And what this algorithm is doing is it's saying like the pixels are actually stored in a one-dimensional array, but I'm looping through this two-dimensional array, so find the right location in the one-dimensional array, and then give me a color equal to the current i, j value. Okay? Um, and um, update pixels. So let's just run this and see if anything happens. It's all black. That's good, because it's all zeros. Right? What if I were to just initialize, let me just go through, um, I didn't actually do the swapping part, but just, just for the sake of argument, 
let me go through and actually write something to initialize that whole array, two-dimensional array, and just say current uh, i equals 100, previous, uh, let's just be i, j, j equals, this is a little bit silly what I'm doing, but I just want to see that this is working. Run this again, we should see a gray value. Whoops, run this again. Right, we see a gray value. If I do 255 for both of those, I'm going to see white. Okay, so it actually is rendering what's in there. And then I forgot something really important, which is written in the algorithm, swap the buffers, because what is now current should be previous for the next frame. And then we have a new current, which should then become previous for the next frame. And so there's a nice swapping algorithm that I can use to do that. I can create a two dimension of reference to called, that I'm going to call temporary, which should equal uh, current. Then I'm going to say previous equals, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to say which e equals, actually, yeah, 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 previous. <laughs> so I'm going to say previous is now the current, right? The current is now previous, and then I can just reuse that other, the previous one for current instead of making a new two-dimensional array. This is a swapping algorithm. I have to store a reference to previous because I'm going to overwrite what previous is pointing to, but then I'm going to set current equal that. So this should now still work, but I'm not going to see anything. So now, hopefully we're going to see something. Now here's the thing. I kind of, I kind of want these to be floats. I don't know why they're integers. I sort of feel like they should be floats because I'm going to do all this like math to them. Um, and um, so this should also be a float. And now, what if what I'm going to do is I'm going to, whenever I click the mouse, actually, let's just see if this works to be, let's say uh, previous, previous like 100, 100 equals 255. Um, and um, Let's see if this is going to do what I think it's going to do. I'm just thinking, thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a crazy person while I'm live streaming. Does this make sense what I'm doing? Oh, whatever. Let's just run it. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, something happened. It's like spread, it spread out from the center there. Hmm. What did I get wrong? That was interesting. Uh, hold on. Let's look at this algorithm. Oh, I, did I, I forgot about the dampening. I forgot about the dampening. Very important there. So where do I do that? Uh, so now I also need to say current ij, I need to dampen it, equals current ij times damping. Did I call it damping or dampening? I guess I should call it dampening, right? Dampening. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> this didn't work the way I'd hoped. So let's see here. Let's look at this. This, all of this, all of this divided by two. Is this multiply? Is this, these should be multiplied together? What's the chance these should be multiplied? It also, it does say they're, they should be integers. I don't know, maybe what numbers should I be putting in these? Um, oh, wait. Yeah, this is adding. Oh, yeah, let me look at this. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, oh, the camera went off. Thank you. This, de this little debugging session is going to have to get edited. Error at line 37. Right. 
Right, do, is my swapping wrong? Swapping should be right. The swapping should be fine. Pre I think the swapping is okay. But what I'm interested in here, is this the same thing? Destination, oh! That's interesting. Oh, but that's the same. <gasps> that shouldn't matter. More damping. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's try, throw, uh, let, let me try more, let, maybe 0.9 just isn't enough. Let me try 0.5. Whoops. No, I don't think the dampening is happening. All right, I guess it is. Oh, weird. Some weird stuff is going on here. Does, should these be normalized values between zero and one? Um, and maybe I should just be like, Scaling up by 255. That's sort of the same thing. And what's the difference there, right? Mm. It's current, not previous. Yeah, but why would that make a difference? Wouldn't that not make a difference? No. Whoa. Oh. 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 It does make a difference. It definitely makes a difference. Why does that make a difference? Yeah, that's no dampening. Yeah, it's very different, but how come my brain is not, that's not clicking into my brain right now? It's very different because, so I start with all these previous values, and then the current value is equal to, oh, because it's been swapped. Of course it's different because it's been swapped. Okay, so let me, because um, it's different data, right? Thank you. It's been because of the swap. We didn't, we didn't start from a blank thing. Okay. Yeah, I didn't notice that here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, whoops. So I didn't actually, I wasn't being very careful here. This, I should actually be taking, whoops. Sorry, hold on, there's a... I'm back, that was uh, uh, edited out like a me just like spinning my head around for a while there because I really was not being very careful. It, this says buffer two here, this says buffer one here. And in my code, I have previous, I'm adding up all the previous, dividing that by two, and then subtracting out previous. But that's not what I want, right? Because we have current, and we have previous, and so um, it's different data. <laughs> so I'm taking the neighbors from previous and then subtracting out what's in current. So let me fix that. Let me fix that, change that here. Uh, um, the dampening is there. I added that in while I was debugging. Maybe you just saw me do that, I'm not sure. Uh, and now, aha, there we go. That looked like a water ripple. All right, let's, let's be a little bit more explicit. So first of all, let's, um, let's just make the dampening uh, zero, like really high, I'm just curious. 
Yeah, you can see that ripple kind of going out. Whoa, and bouncing around the edges. Cool. All right, I'm going to leave it at 0.9. Now, this is really what I want to do. Let me make this like 600 by 400. Let me add mouse pressed. And by the way, the um, let me put, let me, I'm going to take the columns should equal the width. I'm going to put all this. The rows should equal the height. And I want to initialize. I got to do this all after I set the size. Um, and now these, I can set the, the two arrays. So I want to do all that in setup so that whenever I change the size of the window to, the number of columns, rows, and the, and the two-dimensional arrays all change. So let's run this and see, just see, whoops. What happened to my, oh, I, I commented that out, that out. So now what I want to do is when I click the mouse, I want to find the right spot in the array. And I want to say index equals mouse x plus mouse y times rows. And me clicking the mouse is like dropping a pebble into the water. And so I can say, I think I, sh I put it in previous. I don't know, it, doesn't, it might not matter. Previous index. Oh, no, 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 I forgot. These are two-dimensional arrays already. So I can actually just say previous mouse x, mouse y, equals 255. So as I click, and I'm just curious. I think it'll actually work the same way if I put current. Yeah. So let's, let's use current. It kind of makes a little more sense to me. Let's, de let's increase the dampening a bit. I mean, it's actually decreasing it so that the ripples go out a little further. I want to see them interact with each other. That's pretty cool. And I'm... So there we go. Water ripples in processing pixel-based water ripples. And now it would be so, what, oh, oh, what am I even doing? What am I even doing? Mouse dragged. There we go. How lovely. Look at this wonderful water ripples all rippling around. So you, I think now I've made something that you, the viewer, could do much more with. For example, what if you thought about color? What if you actually started with an image and then you made the sort of pixels of the image, the initial values, oh, and you could like ripple over those. Oh, oh, I so want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you do that. Make something with this. Now, this is eventually going to get really slow and it's probably going to be really slow the more, the big, larger, the higher the resolution I make. And if I'm, I'm going to try to make a JavaScript version of it, it's probably going to be really slow due to how slow pixel operations are in HTML5 Canvas. But I will think about all this stuff. I just want you to be aware of that. Um, I'm sure that uh, some of you will write in the comments and have some clever ideas how to make this into like a shader or something that's heavily optimized. But I'm happy where this is. This is two-dimensional water ripples thanks to the uh, Hugo Elias page from many years ago uh, about how to do this algorithm in two dimensions. Okay, thanks for watching. Goodbye. All right. Line 37 is still wrong? Or is that just from before? No, I think I, didn't I get it? What's wrong with this? Bring director lingo back. Have the canvas adjust color with a rainbow effect. Yeah, so many things. All right, it's 1.15. I'm going to go. I think I did a lot of stuff today. I feel pleased. <laughs> um, yeah, this would be a good for me to actually learn about shaders and, and come back to that. I'm just looking here. Um, looking through my email to see if there's anything really important. Uh, ooh, there's some more comments on my... TensorFlow example. Uh, all right. Um, oh, Nikhil left some good comments on my. Oh, so by the way, if you're looking to follow, I should mention this. If you're looking to follow along with my TensorFlow examples, um, let's let's. Um, whoops, not here. Sorry. Uh, TensorFlow. Where? Let me go to uh, Shiftman. Um, repositories, uh, 
Yeah, here's what I'm looking for, TensorFlow. So this, by the way, is where I am creating some of these examples that I hope to make and kind of build from scratch in a video tutorial. And I wrote some questions about this, and I can XOR one, and I think that, and Nikhil uh, Thorad is one of the creators of TensorFlow.js, uh, responded here. So, um, so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna read this very carefully after I go off, and I'm glad this is here because, um, you know, so when I, this is gonna be helpful information for when I come back and actually get to um, these parts here. <whistles> All right, so thanks for tuning in today. Um, I can take a few minutes to answer some questions. Anybody in the uh, chat have any questions you wanna ask? I'm looking at the patron chat, and I'm looking at the YouTube chat right now. David Smith says there's a fantastic WebGL version of this in 3D with shader, shaders made by Evan. Made by Evan uh, WebGL Water. Whoa. That's cool. <laughs> That's better than mine. <laughs> uh, Um, how would webcam video input uh, train a neural network to play the Chrome Dinosaur game? I would love to do that. Uh, can you play chess? I'm not very good. I mean, I know how to play chess. I can play chess. I'm also very, I'm very good at losing at chess. It's divided by two minus current. I know. I, I fixed that though. That was the problem. Oh, I think people are. I think people are like in the chat, like 30 minutes or 45 minutes behind. Oh, pick up the ball. How do I pick up the ball? Interactions, press the space bar, drag the background, draw in the water, press, drag the sphere to move it around. Oh, wow. Wow, this is crazy. Ooh. Oh, this is, this is more than I could ever do. All right. Um, uh, how is AI useful for a startup? Well, I think the first thing anyone should do when they're considering using an AI algorithm is ask themselves if they should be doing what they're doing and if what they're doing is kind of helping the world in some way. So um, that's what I would say. So I don't know that AI is useful for a startup. I should still, you should still do an introduction to Firebase. I have done an introduction to Firebase. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, um, so I think I'm going to go. Let me play my goodbye song. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Now, here's the, here's, I got good news, bad news. It's mostly just bad news. I will not be live streaming next week. However, oh, yeah. I don't know. What do, do people think? Um, hold on. Uh, what should I call that coding challenge? My May, May the 4th coding challenge? Star, should I use the word the War of the Stars coding challenge? <laughs> um, so um, I think probably just May the 4th coding challenge is good. Um, I know that like May, May the 4th be a part of your soul is a copyrighted phrase. Um, so ITP Thesis Week is next week, May 8th to 11th. I will be watching all of these thesis presentations. There are many of them. These will all be live streamed. So instead of watching me next week, you should tune into the live stream, not on the coding train. You have to go to this webpage, itp.nyu.edu slash show slash thesis2018. Mark your calendars. Um, if possible, I'm gonna try to be in the Slack, for those of you who are patrons and are in the Slack channel, um, we can have a little like chat going uh, in the live channel for these li this live stream. I mean, I like to give my full attention to the students, so I don't want to be just there in the audience like typing on my laptop, but to the extent that we can have a discussion about them and answer, talk about them and answer questions during the live stream, I'm available for that. And um, yeah, so that's what's coming next week. So that's next week. So I won't have my regular coding train live stream. Also, if you are in the New York City area, 
you should come to ITP Tuesday, May 15th, Wednesday, May 16th. I am tentatively planning to do my coding train live stream from the show Wednesday, May 16th, probably around 2 or 3 p.m. So I usually like to do that before the official start of the show. I think this year I'm gonna ask somebody to like hold the camera for me. <laughs> I would try, I like the idea of, you know, kind of just holding the camera myself and being like a one person operation, but I'm ho apparently horrible at it. And so I might uh, try to see if I can get a slightly better system of that. Um, so, I'm more making a joke about how I can't say may the, uh, <clears throat> the number four be with you. <laughs> Somebody said to me earlier today, because otherwise Revenge of the Fifth will come next. I don't know. Um, all right, where am I under live? I think I'm going now. Uh, celestial body conflicts. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm going to see Infinity War this weekend. I'm very excited about it with my uh, nine-year-old uh, son. We're very excited about it. Um, I don't know. Should I be excited about it? I don't know. Don't, uh, now people are going to spoil me in the chat. This is totally annoying. So I'm not looking at the YouTube chat anymore. Goodbye, everybody. I will see you um, not next week. But the week after next, stay tuned, follow me on Twitter, or hit subscribe with the alarm bell. Um, I'm trying to schedule these now as events, so that usually like the upcoming live streams are scheduled actually on YouTube in more in advance. So hopefully I'll be able to keep doing that. And um, that's it for today. Um, goodbye. Oh, this is what I do now. I play my trailer as the outro. <laughs> so I'll do that. I'll play the trailer as the outro. Let's find something we want to make, some crazy idea. We'll figure out what it takes to make that.